Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got your usual breakdown for Isanzo's 24th devlog. So today's focus was entirely on the new map, but this time we got a much more in-depth look at all of the terrain and fortifications from a complete flyover, which will be all of the footage you see in the background of this video. So last week we talked a little bit about the map and its overall structure, stating that it has two main defense lines that will need to be broken through in order to have an Italian victory, but there's much more to it than just that. Those two defense lines have several other obstacles and terrain differences that will need to be overcome, but we also got a much more detailed look into both of these objectives individually. So here at the start of the flyover, we can see a long line of barbed wire, and this will be the first section that will need to be broken through by the wire cutter engineers. After this, they'll need to push up the slope into another line of wire to finally reach the first line of trenches, and this is also the first major objective, also known as the Drazine Hut Refuge. Sorry for terrible pronunciation, as always. Here will be several heavy machine guns for the defenders, and other buildable defensive emplacements, as well as a command post of sorts that can be used by officers of either side, the Austrians before its capture and the Italians after, as a way to call an ordinance. Also, side note, this will be a capture and hold objective, so once the Italians do take it, they will have to face a few counterattacks from Austro-Hungarians rushing down to them. Once this objective is fully secured, then the Italians will have to set their sights on the second and final objective, which is the pinnacle of the entire map, the Sasso de Sesto. This is a large trench line command post that looks down on the entire map. Both sides will be able to place forward spawn points in the trench complex, so it will likely be a huge bloodbath and the section of the map with the most fighting. Here, there will be apparently lots of creative liberties for engineers to construct barbed wire and sandbags, but the Italians will have a very interesting buildable asset upon reaching this objective. They'll be able to build a mountain gun right outside of the last objective, but unfortunately, this dev blog did not go into detail about the functionality of it. So as per usual, we'll just have to wait to get more info on it. Finally, at the very top of this final area, there's a small patch of wooden huts and bunkers that will serve as the last stand for the Austro-Hungarians if the Italians progress the whole map. At this section, they made it very apparent that this will be a close quarters area dominated by primarily pistols and bayonets. And I just want to add that these interiors, both on this map and on the other maps, are a massive improvement over those of Tannenberg and Verdun. And I think it'll add a lot to the atmosphere and immersion of the game tremendously. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail here from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.